here we have a taxi MPU that had. Sorry, I don't have an answer for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, big brother. The uh, MPU had quite a bit of corrosion. Um, you can see these top traces, I've sanded them down and they look good. Fortunately, up here were these uh, combination pull-up resistor and capacitor uh, devices were the traces are pretty clean. Um, there was one trace that was pulled up or destroyed, I guess, with corrosion. It's the third one from the left in the top row. And then I've marked some traces where there is no connection to the trace destination. And most of that damage was incurred by a prior repair tech, in air quotes, replacing U37 and not using a socket. And you can kind of see the um, less than stellar work that was done here. So I'm going to repair this the right way. I'm going to remove this chip, even though these pads have experienced some heat damage previously. And I'm going to see if I can do a better job of repairing that. So I've removed the chip and you can immediately see the where some traces were damaged. This trace, which has nothing to do with this chip, is supposed to pass through here and through some previous prying or something, that trace was severed. And then same thing with this trace supposed to pass straight through here and that was severed also so let me do some noodling on the best way to repair this hackage so i've finished doing the analysis of where these traces should go and the gold dots should be connected and you can see here that this trace with a gold dot on it is severed needlessly right here, but it should connect from this PIA to this PIA. Same thing with the silver dots where it's severed right here. And then of course there's some, some dodgy, I guess, through holes that have been pulled right here. Now I'm gonna use a machine pin sip to see if I can't make a good solder joint on the top side of this board. So here's the first power up of the taxi MPU after abating the alkaline corrosion and running the jumpers. And I buzz the jumpers to make sure I've got them going to the right place. And some good news, the lamp matrix is operating properly. I tested the solenoids at drives for both the uh, multiplexed and the special solenoids and they're working fine. The sound is working fine. But I do have a little problem with the display, as you can see. The top display is missing some segments and it looks like some are lighting in sympathy. The bottom display works fine and it looks like the bonus display, as it is on taxi, is missing a segment there on the leftmost digit, which should be a five, I believe. So let's get some logic probes out and see where we can diagnose this issue. So here we are again with the taxi MPU that when last I had it on the bench, it was showing some anomalies with the display. For instance, segment A was off. So I marked pin 10, I believe it is, on the 6821 there at U41 and traced the signal up through the pull-up resistor and then out pin 19 of J. 22, and it was working properly. So my suspicion was that there was some corrosion under the dual row header or the header was just shot. So I replaced that header with a box header. These are much nicer. If, if you can get them to fit on the board, uh, they won't fit on WPC boards, WPC MPU at least, but it's keyed and it makes it 
impossible to misplace the, the ribbon cable. So let's power up. You can see I have spared no expense on a shade for the display. And the first thing you note is that segment A is lit and the, the middle segment, I don't know which one that is, on the five there is operating properly. So let's put it into test. Let's see if I can get this right. Music test and all this is gonna come from the CPU board itself. You know, I love taxi. I've never owned one, but I'd sure like to own one. Okay, let's go to the next test, which is display test. Ah, that looks much better, doesn't it? Taxi has only numeric displays on the bottom. And that is the bonus display that just tested. I saw an interesting failure on one of the pinball groups the other day where a display similar to this, the user had changed it over to European settings and Europeans just used the dot instead of the whole comma. And the uh, comma was shorted to one of the segments on the display. Looking good, lamp test. <clears throat> All lamps are working properly. Let's do single lamp test. Working properly. And the next test is coil test. And Taxi used a multiplex device to switch between the A side and the C side. And so you see the orange solenoid 12 blinking as the C side lights up. I'm going to test the switch input solenoids while we're waiting on that. And now the CPU will drive those switch input solenoids. This is the special solenoids. Always used for pop bumpers. Slingshots. Eh, that's probably all they ever use them for. Maybe there's some more. Okay, let's do uh, switch edges. And Taxi's last switch is switch 58. So that is column one. And row one and the last switch for taxi 58. Well, that is working properly also. Next test is back to game reboots. Here's the audits. Let's see if we can put high score on here for our client. Whoops. I'm sorry, not high score, free play. There we go. And the board will reboot. And we are on free play. So we're good to go. Thank you so much for sending it. Uh, those of you that are watching these videos to see when your board comes up in the queue, I thank you for your patience. I've been making a lot of progress lately. Been able to stay at home uh, while taking a break from doing some family visits, and I have almost 100% recovered from the vertigo that I was suffering. Some final notes on this Taxi MPU. I installed NVRAM, it takes a 6116. You can retrofit it with a 6264 by uh, installing that chip and moving the jumper from W5 to W6. Installed the box header. As you can see here, it fits nicely on this particular board. Cleaned up all this alkaline corrosion, replaced C30 that's in the reset circuit, removed, socketed, tested this 6821, and the jumpers on the back that were necessary and 
I tend to banjo string these. I like to do that because now I'm going to tack these down with a, a nice coat of my conformal coating so that if they're, if the board's sliding around in a box or something that these jumper wires won't be um, ripped off there. Now I use different color wires sometimes. This this board really wasn't necessary, but sometimes it gets kind of confusing where things are going. So uh, I, just to demonstrate some of the different wire colors that I can use for jumper wires. And that is it. This, uh, oh, this solder flux residue, this is gonna come off when I take this board outside and wash it down with my caster all super clean. And I'll do that and then I'll come back and conform will coat it so that these wires get tacked down because castor oil super clean also takes off conformal coat that's it thanks so much everybody have a great day